you will use the new image dialog box which is right here file new or command new uh, when you're going to create an image from scratch in Photoshop or create a blank canvas into which you're going to composite uh, other images, perhaps creating a, a montage of some kind. And uh, I'm just going to talk you through the basics of this. The first thing is that it's not a bad idea to name your file to begin with if you know what it's going to be. And if you're going to, um, if you're creating something for the web, it's a good idea to uh, name it using the usual web naming convention that is no spaces, no uppercase, don't start with a number, all those kind of things. So it's a good idea to name your image. The next thing that you can do is that you can take uh, advantage of these presets here. At the moment it's on custom and that means that you can completely customize and do what you like in the dialog boxes here. So for example if I wanted to make a 500 pixel square image I could just type this in quite freely, choose the resolution, it's on 72 which is suitable for the web and choose the transparent background. I always recommend using the transparent background, it's the checkerboard background and it allows you to see clearly areas of uh, transparency in the image. If you choose a white background you're never quite sure whether you've got white pixels there or the background is transparent. So using this custom preset you can pretty well do whatever you like. If you're doing something for print then you can select uh, 300 dpi. So that's, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Let's close this one and go back here because there's a few other things to, to bear in mind here that are, are pretty useful. And that uh, Photoshop comes with a lot of customizable presets now. Um, so it's got paper sizes, which is fantastic. So international paper sizes here will give you the standard A paper sizes. That's A4, A6, etc. So A4 is 297 millimeters by 210, and so on and so forth. It saves you having to type that in. Uh, American imperial sizes, I believe they're called imperial sizes are here. Um, generally speaking we don't use those too much in Europe but of course uh, in America if you're doing stuff for print you might want to use those. Uh, then we've got web and this has some basic uh, preset sizes so 800 by 600 um, is a kind of uh, aspect ratio that ensures maximum um, compatibility with 15 inch um, or 15 inch resolution. I think that's RGB resolution devices. I think we've moved beyond that now so if you're developing for websites you're more likely to use 1024 by 768. Again you can alter change any of these once you've selected a, a preset if you like. I think probably the most useful set of presets that Photoshop offers now are the film and video ones because getting aspect ratios um, correct is quite a tricky business and it now includes a wide range of uh, NTSC which is American TV and PAL and just HDV um, presets so you can get exactly the right kind of uh, size and the other thing about this is that once you choose a preset um, it'll also um, let's just choose one of these I suppose PAL widescreen will do as good as any it will also automatically select the correct aspect ratio for you. So this is pixel aspect ratio correction. For example, if you're using uh, an anamorphic um, preset, then the way that the pixels will look on the screen in Photoshop will differ how they will look in your video edit due to the pixels being rectangular rather than square in the edit. Um, and so Photoshop basically compensates for that. And when you choose these presets, it'll choose the correct pixel aspect ratio correction uh, view preset for you as well. So um, yeah, there's a lot of help um, when you're creating captions, still images, etc. For, um, for video.